Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture through countdown. This episode is on 90s fashion. Some fashion trends you may remember include Doc Martens, denim jeans, graphic tees, overalls, plaid, bell-bottom jeans, track pants, and starter jackets. Doc Martens. Klaus Martens was a doctor for the German army during World War II. While on vacation in 1945, he injured his ankle and found that the injury was due to the lack of quality in his army issued boots. It wasn't until 1947 when Martins met Herbert Funk that the two went into business in Seehaupt, Germany, where they used discarded rubber from the Luthhof airfields. The boots became a huge success with housewives. 80% of sales were women over the age of 40. Sales continued to rise until 1952 when they opened a factory in Munich to meet their growing market. By 1959, Martin and Funk were looking at marketing their new footwear internationally. In the 1990s, Dr. Martins became extremely popular as grunge fashion began to rise denim jackets. Levi Strauss created the first denim jacket in 1880. Originally, both the denim jacket and jeans were created for cowboys, miners, and railroad workers. The denim jacket we recognize today is the Type 3 denim jacket, which was created by Levi Strauss & Co. in 1962. Jean jackets, just like jeans, are a crucial element of Western wear and appearance. James Dean, John Lennon, and Jasek Kuran are all known for wearing jean jackets. According to Levi Strauss and Company, since its inception, the denim jacket has appealed to nonconformists as a way of knocking at the suit. It is informal while also edgy, thus making it the perfect piece of attire to wear that says this is me take me as I am. Graphic tees. Graphic tees started as military fashion. In World War II, soldiers had to be given t-shirts that had their branches on them in order to make organization much easier. Of course, naturally, after soldiers came home from the war, they kept wearing these shirts with their branches drawn on them. These shirts would then go on to be a fashion statement through which our men and women of uniform could declare their military service. In the 1950s, new inks were created which allowed for screen printing. Designers were now able to create complex graphics to sell to a wider audience. Companies also started printing their recognizable slogans, logos, and cartoons on t-shirts. From the 1950s to the 1970s, music culture would take over the evolution of the graphic tee. By the 1990s, consumers could purchase graphic tees where they could show off their favorite cartoon, TV show, or music band. This ability to customize your own appearance would also go on to become an essential aspect of the grunge look. The grunge look. In mid-1992, grunge fashion became mainstream. Grunge fashion consisted of flannel shirts, mom jeans, ripped jeans, overalls, Doc Martens, graphic tees, oversized sweaters, ripped tights, and environmentally conscious clothes made of recycled and fair trade materials. Grunge fashion peaked in popularity between late 1993 and early 1994. Glamour wear. In 1994, as grunge clothing rapidly declined, more feminine and form-fitting attire became popular. Young women living in Europe and America wore short skirts and dresses, animal prints, slim pants, baby doll dresses, and bright colors regardless of the season. High shine fabrics like satin, sequins, microfiber, silk, and vinyl became popular for work and social activities. The most common look in 1994 for young women was the short black slip dress worn on top of a tight white t-shirt. Lounge wear generally consisted of lycra leggings, large t-shirts, sweatshirts, turtlenecks, and sweaters while at home alone or out and about socializing with friends. 
as a backlash against the darker tones associated with the grunge look, the late 90s saw a surge in bright colors returning into the mainstream. The top colors were plum, chocolate, and navy, all replacements for the popularity for black which was now attributed to the outdated grunge look the hip-hop look. Hip-hop fashion went mainstream in 1992. Oversized baseball, bomber, and Baja jackets became extremely popular along with baggy jeans and tracksuits. However, almost simultaneously, military styles crept back into the mainstream fashion as it also became cool to wear your baseball cap forward again. Due to hip-hop culture, sportswear became mainstream to wear in public throughout the mid to late 90s. Oversized t-shirts of different colors, baseball hats of different teams, tennis shoes, hoodies, large jean jackets, khaki cargo pants, baggy basketball shorts, track suits, and black bomber jackets with orange lining became synonymous with the hip hop look. For younger children, the mid to late 90s was the golden age of Disney films and different types of clothing, including t-shirts and sweaters, featured characters like Mickey Mouse, Belle, Aladdin, Winnie the Pooh, and many others. Tweens and teens wore sweatshirts worn over turtleneck, colored jeans, athletic shorts, blue denim and railroad striped overall, the sneaker brand Keds, boat shoes such as the Sperry Topsider, and and Converse sneakers. Thank you for watching this episode on 90s fashion. Let us know in the comment section below what you remember wearing in the 90s. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next episode. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.